Good morning, it's 8.30. We are in Pouligny Morache here with our friend Benoit. Cheers. How are Thank you? Thank you. I prefer this to coffee, I have to say. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is amazing. Thank you for taking the time. No, it's my pleasure. We are tasting the 20s. Yeah, exactly. What's your general impression on 2020? I feel the, the balance between fruit, ripeness, acidity it's it's just amazing what, what yeah um, yeah i'm very happy with the with, with the wine now it's a very challenging vintage because uh, we we need uh, picked very early in august uh, yes. we start 22 the uh, earliest right yeah earliest for for us and um, yeah now the result is uh, is yeah so special we have Good ripeness, but nothing too much, and um, beautiful energy and fineness and minerality. Each terroir are so clear, and uh, for me the challenge is uh, is okay. Yeah, and, no, uh, the the wines uh, taste absolutely beautiful. Etienne Zosé, a huge name in the wine world, in the white wine world. Um, the great grandfather of your wife. Yeah, exactly. Um, you are Benoit. Yeah. Where are you from? Who are you? Ah, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, um, the Emily husband yes. uh, first and um, I'm uh, arrived in, uh, in Sauzé to join Emily uh, yes. first and I work with my father-in-law Gérard and Emily and my mother-in-law a little bit too. And uh, I come from Sancerre, uh, just uh, a real white wine region. Yeah, white white region and uh, Sauvignon region, and my family have vineyards, and that's why I uh, just a uh, winemaker now because I I burn. Yes. In the in vineyards. Absolutely. Are you um, more outside? Are you more in the cellar, or are you just everywhere? Are you omnipresent? Not sure. We we work together with Emily, and yes. uh, we little bit cut half half okay. for, for the business. Yeah, my work is more in the cellar and outside with the team for for growing, and Emily move more for uh, allocation, commercial side, and uh, administrative way and driving the society. Yes, but uh, yes, we we work together. We task a lot uh, for decision and uh, so it's a real family business. You of course, wake yeah. up in the morning and you that's burn why for it's Zose. interesting. <laughs> yes, it's an, it's uh, it's amazing. We think that uh, great wine is um, is made in the wine fields, in the garden. Yeah, the the grape quality that enters the cellar once you harvest is absolutely essential and the work that you do in the cellar is as little as possible um is that your view too yeah is that how you uh, how you how you exactly see great wine for me uh, the, the the challenge <laughs> for, for each vintage it's uh, pick the best grade possible the best day uh, to have identity of each terroir and density and balance but after in the cellar, it's uh, just élevage. We do nothing. Uh, we press, put in barrels, and wait. And you let it sleep. And sleep, and that's all. Perfect. When you uh, would describe what you are looking for in in your ideal white Burgundy, the ones that you produce, what are the main qualities or the main characteristics that you are always searching? You know, um, aromatics. Straightness, balance. I, what 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 is important? For my you? idea, it's a little bit like I said just before. It I just want balance, energy, and identity. That's all. Identity. Terroir you style. mean that Purity. you can feel where it's coming from, the terroir. From the terroir. Yeah. Yes. Not identity of wine <coughs> grower. Yes. It's not problem. I understand. I understand. <laughs> yeah. You don't you don't have this problem. No. Fortunately. No. No. But I, I don't. I don't. I don't. You. Uh, <coughs> search. Yes, I understand. I, I, ju I just want to try make wine with soul identity. That's all. For me, the Burgundy, it's that. It's each plot have an identity and you just... And the terroir put, varies put a little bit. Put the terroir in the glass, that's all. Yeah. And even though it's a relatively small area, the terroir is very different in yeah. different spots. Yeah, yeah, of course. Why is that? Because the soil, it's never the same, in fact. Deepness, um, quality of clay, yeah. quantity of limestone, mm. 
rocks. How is the rock yeah. diffract or not? <coughs> you have the slope like that, but after you have few fails. Um, yes, it's the, the the magic side of Burgundy. Yeah, it's it's wonderful. Uh, last question um, for our uh, for our clients: important or nice to understand? Walk us quickly through the range of your wines. So we are starting with a Bourgogne Blanc. Mm -hmm. This is where the journey of Etienne Zosé starts, right? Yeah. And then where do we go? What's the, the your, your What's range? The move? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, yes, it's Bourgogne Blanc first. We have um, good vineyards in Haute Côte. Yes. Two um, now since uh, five vintage now. Mm -hmm. And after, of course, we have village. It's called Haute Côte de Beaune. Haute Côte de Beaune. And this Jar is Jardin du Calvaire. This is also village. It's regional wine. Yes. Yes. Okay. And after we have village with Chassagne. This is Bourgogne Blanc. Sorry. This is Bourgogne, Bourgogne Blanc. Bourgogne Haute Côte. Okay. So this is the same category. Yeah. Yeah. And after we have village category. We yes. have Chassagne Enseignère and village Puligny. Why Enseignère? Enseignère. It's Lyodi. It's it's Lyodi cross between Chassagne and Puligny. Okay. Both. So it's a village category. It's village but it has... category, but directly close to Grand Cru. Okay. Batard Moraché, just and under Batard. That's why you are allowed to put the Enseignère. Exactly. That's, uh, Burgundy is very complicated, so... <laughs> but that's great. And, and then? And then after Premier Cru range, we have nine Premier Cru uh, in Puligny. Nine Premier Cru. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, yes. It could be a good trip inside and mm -hmm. that's why it's interesting to try different soil, different terroir and it's easy understanding when you try the nine. Yes. And after that we have four Grand Cru. Four Grand Cru. The four Grand Cru on Pulling side. Bienvenue Batard. Yeah. Batard, Montraché and Chevalier on the top of the slope. Great. So um, you have a nice complete range. All of the grapes that you use are from your own territory or do you also buy some grapes? Yeah. Now we have, we make 18 cuvées. Yeah. In the 18 cuvées, we have four with two buy, gra buy grapes. Okay. This is called it's, Negos, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, Bourgogne Blanc. Yeah. Garenne, mm -hmm. Premier Cru. And the two Grand Cru on the top, Moraché and Chevalier. And all the rest, it's uh, so they growing and uh, we own. If there was one white wine that we would drink apart from your own wine <laughs> from around the world, not Burgundy, what would it be? Sorry? If there was a white wine yeah. that you want to choose with, to drink with To drink me, together? But not Burgundy wine. Not Burgundy. What would you choose? Ah, good question. Or is it too early? For that question. No, no, it's not too early. <laughs> I don't know. The easy answer, it could be... What do you be, love? The easy answer, it could be, uh, we need to try Sauvignon together. Okay, And great. Sancerre. Because, so, because it's my, in my... Uh, in your blood. In your blood. So what I will too. bring is some Austrian sausages. Okay, why not? Okay, so... We can do that. <laughs> stay tuned, Kate and Con TV, because next session, I don't know when, is going to be with Benoit in Sancerre. Yeah, why Cheers. not? Challenge. <laughs>